Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Kaushal Shah and I'm here to discuss the answer paper of cyclic test 2 for biology mm -hmm. subject for 10th ICAC. So the paper was for 30 marks and it was for one hour duration. Now let's discuss all the answers. You have the answer key in front of you on your screen, but we are going to discuss each and every answer here. So let's start with the first question. The first question is fill in the blank. When I say fill in the blank, some very common instructions to write any fill in the blank. Uh, first, you are supposed to write the entire statement along with the answer and underline the answer. Right? So these are the basic rules that you are supposed to follow while writing any fill in the blank in your answer paper. So here the fill in the blank are for five marks, one mark each. Let's start discussing the answer. So the first one, transport of substances against concentration gradient in a cell by using energy is called as dash. As it is against the concentration gradient, your energy has to be utilized and this process is what is known as active transport. So the answer is active transport. Next one, water is conducted upwards by dash tissue. We know water is always conducted by just one tissue in plant and that is xylem. So the correct answer here is xylem. The third one, the cell sap in the large vacuole is concentrated, thus allowing for dash to occur and water from soil enters inside. Right? So we know that uh, when the cell is concentrated, that, that means there is somewhere high concentrated solution and inside the cells of the root there is comparatively low concentration and we know the process where there is a difference in concentration and that is osmosis and that is why the answer here is osmosis. Let's go to the next question. Urine is yellow colored due to presence of a pigment called dash. The answer, the name of the pigment is urochrome. Last one, right kidney is slightly lower than the left due to the presence of dash. Now we know the position of kidneys, right kidney slightly lower as compared to the left kidney. The reason is to accommodate a very large gland, in fact the largest gland and that is liver. I mean this answer, if you don't write large liver and if you just write liver, it is still absolutely correct, right? So just one important thing, answers can be of just one word but you are supposed to underline it. So that is about the five marks and fill in the blanks. If you write all these one one word correctly and underline them, you'll be getting full five marks. Now let's move on to the next question. And that is something about name the following. Now, when I say name the following, generally, most commonly, the answer is in one or maximum two words, right? So here, you're just supposed to write the answer. Even if you don't write the question, that's completely fine. So let's discuss the name the following question, which is for five marks. Again, one mark each. The first question in that is condition of passing blood in urine. Right? You have to remember the scientific word for this, and that is hematuria. Right, so it is hemat urea. Hemat refers to blood. Urea is referring to urine here. So hemat urea is the answer. Next one is the second question: condition of passing glucose in urine. Now glucose also is referred to glycogen. So the word glyco is used here, and instead of gluco, we call it glycosuria. Right. So here the correct answer is glycosuria. If you write that, one mark will be given. Right. Next question is the third one. Condition of the cell placed in hypotonic solution. Now, whenever you place a cell in a hypotonic solution, it is going to take in water. So endosmosis is going to take place and that cell will swell up and that condition is what is known as turgid cell. So your answer is turgid. The fourth one, pressure exerted by the cell contents on the cell wall. So here we are talking about the pressure which is exerted of all the contents of the cell outside towards the cell wall. And this pressure is known as turgor pressure. So the correct answer is turgor pressure. Okay, the next one. The pressure by which the water molecules tend to cross the semi-permeable membrane. You know, when we talk about osmosis to take place, it is nothing about but movement of water from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And the pressure which is created by this movement, right? Uh, by which the water uh, molecules gets transferred from one side to another of a semi permeable membrane is known as osmotic pressure. So here, the correct answer is osmotic pressure. Now, let me go to the next question and that is question number three. Okay, so let's now focus on this particular question. Uh, 
here the main question is write down the functional activity of the following parts so basically in short you are supposed to write the function of that particular part or organ right so let's see again this is a four mark question so four questions one one mark each let's start with the first one the first one is glomerulus when the functional activity is asked the it is very clear that glomerulus is involved in the process of what is known as ultrafiltration right it does the work of ultrafiltration of blood and this is where the liquid part of the plasma you know the uh, liquid part of the blood which is plasma which includes useful as well as harmful things like urea salts glucose filters out from the glomerulus and gets accumulated in the bowman's capsule and it further moves to the renal tubule right so if it is just the functional activity which is asked about glomerulus you can just write in short also that it is involved in the ultra filtration of blood where uh, blood will be filtered from the glomerulus and will be accumulated in the bowman's capsule let us go to the next question the second question is the function of henle's loop now it's a u pin shaped structure in the renal tubule part so here it is involved with reabsorption of two things one is water and second is sodium ions right so that is the answer for the second question let's go to the third one people uh, it is about ureter now let's try to understand something about the function of ureter it is this ureters which carry urine right from the kidney to the urinary bladder once again from the kidney to the urinary bladder right so that is the answer for the third one let's go to the last one and that is renal artery as the word renal suggests it has to do something with kidney always remember that artery is something which supplies blood to different organs here we will be talking about kidney so that is the function of renal artery by the way renal artery supplies blood to the kidney right so these are the functions which are involved now let's go to the fourth question it will be bigger questions now with bigger answers so let's try to understand something about that now this is for six marks so normally it is two marks each right so let's try to understand something further uh, first question is give reason a plant cell kept in a hypertonic salt solution for about 30 minutes turns flaccid let's try to discuss the answer here people when you keep any plant cell in a hypertonic solution right you need to understand that in this case and it is kept for 30 minutes so it's a pretty long time in this case there is eggs osmosis which is going to take place right why because the concentration of salt is higher outside the cell as compared to inside the cell so water from the cell will go out will pass through the cell membrane and go out in the solution which is hypertonic salt solution so that is why i would say that as x osmosis takes place there is loss of water from the cell and as the cell loses water it starts shrinking it starts shrinking right and this shrinkage right and after the entire process of shrinking takes place the cell from a very turgid state now is converted into a flaccid state and that is what is the answer of this particular give reason you can give one example also that weeds can be killed in a playground by sprinkling excessive salts around their base so as you sprinkle excessive salt you are creating a hypertonic kind of solution outside the weeds and that is how they will start losing water and they will die right so yeah that is about give reason let's go to the second question now and that is what they have asked is about what is uriniferous tubule right now if you talk about uriniferous tubule you talk about kidney tubule you talk about nephrons it is one and the same right so here it is a two mark question so one thing you are supposed to mention is what is uriniferous tubule and the second part of the question says how does it function so let's try to answer that a uriniferous tubule is also known as kidney tubule is nothing but the structural and functional unit of kidney right so it takes in impure blood from the renal artery right and removes waste in the form of urine and gives the pure blood out again through renal vein and it also provides a larger surface area for reabsorption of all the excess of you know water which is taken back by the body and also reabsorption of salts so that is how it functions so first part is about what is uriniferous tubule the second part is about the function of uriniferous tubule let's go to the third question people and that is a distinguish between or differentiate between so here the question is differentiate between end osmosis and ex osmosis now there are certain rules whenever you are supposed to answer any differentiate between question or any distinguish between question first thing always right make two columns and give a proper heading of the question so as you can see here 
a table is made where you can see two headings on the left hand side end osmosis on your right hand side exosmosis and now it depends on the weightage of the question if it is for two marks you're supposed to write at least two point each if it is for three marks you're supposed to write at least three points each right here we have mentioned extra point even though it is for two marks right so let's try to understand something about endosmosis first it is the inward movement of solvent molecules into the cell so if you remember i just told you ahead about <clears throat> about endosmosis exosmosis so let's try to understand endosmosis here it is an inward movement of solvent molecules into the cell so solvent molecules are entering the cell they are entry taking entry into the cell end osmosis right let's see about exosmosis now read about exosmosis it is the outward movement of solvent molecules across the semi permeable membrane so in this case it is the solvent which is moving out of the cell going out of the cell in the surrounding solution let's go to the second point people uh, it makes the cell accommodate water and enlarge in size so suppose there is a fixed size of the cell right now if all the solvent molecules are entering 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 the cell will swell up right and that is how it enlarges in size and exactly opposite takes place in exosmosis in this case it makes the cell lose water and that is how a particular cell right it will start shrinking 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 or it will start shrinking right exactly opposite of endosmosis now again let's go to the third point of endosmosis here it makes the cell turgid now this cell you know which has enlarged in size which has increased in size which has swollen up is scientifically what is known as turgid cell and vice versa if i talk about eggs osmosis here as the cell is shrinking such shrink cell is what is known as flaccid cell so the third point in eggs osmosis is it makes the cell flaccid so i hope this much is clear people uh, let's further proceed to the last main question where you are supposed to attempt any two and it's five mark each let's go step by step so let's start with the first one the first question is draw a label diagram of the root hair cell as it would appear if some fertilizers are added to the soil close to it now people you are supposed to read the question properly here because there is a, a, one more question which we'll say draw well label diagram of a root hair cell right if you in a hurry just read this much and draw the normal diagram of root hair you will straight away get zero right here it is clearly mentioned that it has to be a kind of diagram of a root hair cell where fertilizers have been added close to the you know that particular root hair in the soil then what would be the condition so let's try to understand that we know because of adding fertilizer the external environment of the root hair cell will become hypertonic and because of that eggs osmosis from the root hair would take place and all the solvent that is water will be lost out of the root hair into the soil and that is why this particular root hair now will shrink and so here when you draw that diagram you are supposed to show that yes this root hair has shrink and that is what you can see in the diagram one more thing people when it comes to attempting any questions where you are supposed to make diagrams one the diagrams have to be neat second they should have proper labelings the labelings should be drawn you know or shown with lines right uh next thing there has to be a title to the diagram see which is missing here also but you are supposed to write a title to the diagram and preferably put that diagram in a proper box right so these are some rules that you are supposed to follow while writing the answer of or drawing a particular diagram right let's go to the next question now the second question is about what is dialysis and explain the process of dialysis so it's a five mark question so you are supposed to you know in detail explain what is dialysis and explain the entire process let's discuss the answer first part first point is dialysis is a process by which molecules are separated from large molecules using some semi permeable membrane right so we are going to separate some kind of molecule here why because in the process of dialysis we are going to separate all the waste material out of the blood right So, in case of kidney disease or failure, the kidney machine, which is used for cleaning the blood, uh, for you know a particular direct principle, and in this method, that is what is known as dialysis, by the way. And what is done in this particular method? The arterial blood from the patient's arm is pumped through the dialysis tube, right, and then brought back through the vein. So, there is a dialysis machine. From one artery is a tube which is connected that will take the blood out of the patient's body. will send it to the machine there the machine will filter it and then the filtered blood is taken back by another tube and that will be entering the patient's vein now 
holes in the tubing of kidney machine allows when i say kidney machine or dialysis machine they are one and the same they allow small molecules such as glucose salt and urea to diffuse out right uh, in the both you can say in the bath of water and salts and glucose while leaving behind larger molecules like protein so whenever this kind of filtration takes place all the smaller molecules will be filtered out all the nitrogenous waste will be filtered out and the larger molecules will remain in, in itself and that is what will be returned back uh, further blood dialysis or what is also scientifically known as hemodialysis separates smaller molecules like urea and other metabolic waste from the blood while the large ones like proteins are retained in the plasma and it is also what is known as artificial kidney why because we when the kidney is of a person fails right when they cannot do the same filtration work is done outside the body by a machine so we commonly call it as artificial kidney right okay so now let's go to the last question okay so here there's a diagram given and you're supposed to answer some questions based on that diagram so let's start name the parts labeled 1 2 3 and 4 let me just show you with the cursor that where are the parts this is one as you can see i'm just moving the cursor around <coughs> that is nothing but inferior vena cava or you can also call it posterior vena cava here by mistake they have mentioned post vena cava it is actually posterior vena cava or inferior vena cava now let's go to labeling number 2 and that is just on the right hand side here right and it is nothing but the largest artery and that is nothing but aorta right so that is what it, it is here now further let's try to understand something let's go to labeling number 3 and that number 3 i'll just move around the cursor this is number 3 it is nothing but a branch of aorta itself which is entering the kidney and that is renal artery now let me go to number 4 here it is here okay and that is nothing but joining the posterior vena cava and that is renal vein right so this is the first part now let's go to the next question give the main functions of the part labeled as 5 6 7 and 8 so here you are supposed to understand two things people one you should know what are the parts that is 5 6 7 8 and you should know their function so let's try to understand each of them here right so number 5 here this part number 5 is ureter so first you have to mention ureter and the function is very simple it is the one which transports urine from kidney to the next organ that is urinary bladder right now let's go to the number 6 labeling here uh, and that is nothing but urinary bladder you can just write urinary bladder you need not write fixed urinary bladder you can just mention urinary bladder the function is very simple it stores urine temporarily till it is released to the urethra right so that is a function of urinary bladder now let me go to 7 labeling number 7 which is here uh it is sphincter muscle right it is sphincter muscle and now let's talk about the function of sphincter muscle a sphincter muscle is the one which guides the opening of the bladder into the urethra and it controls or it regulates the exit of urine out of our body once again it regulates the exit of urine out of our body and that is sphincter muscle now let's go to the last labeling the one that i'm trying to show you with the cursor here and that is urethra right so urethra is involved in the process of what is known as micturition when i say micturition it is a scientific word the meaning of which is expelling urine out of our body right so expelling urine out of the body is scientifically known as micturition and that is a function of urethra so we are done with the second part of the last question now let's read the last part uh, name the endocrine gland which could be added in the diagram and state its location or position uh, i hope you guys remember that on top of kidneys the two kidneys there is a cap like structure which is fitted on the top part of the kidney and that gland is what the question is referring to so let's answer it the name of the gland is adrenal gland right renal is referring to kidney it is on top of kidney we call it adrenal gland and you are supposed to mention the location or position of the gland and that is what i have already mentioned it is fitting like a cap above the kidney so that is the location of adrenal gland and with that uh, we are done with the entire i would say answering of the question paper of cyclic test 2 hope you have understood the detailed explanation of each and every answer so that's it from my side uh, all the best take care